A little bit of a backstory first. I used to roll with three of the most self-destructive guys on the planet. We were constantly in juvenile detention centers. Hell, they had nicknamed us the Four Horsemen. I was a scrappy ass guy and a vandal. My friend Tony was just as scrappy and honestly, most of the time was just guilty of being black in the south in an iffy situation. My friend Jimmy's older brother was a huge drug dealer, so he was permanently on drugs. And our friend Kyle, well, Kyle had lost his leg. And he played that fake leg angle so hard to get away with shit that he was just a straight up criminal. We'd smash windows and smoke pot or take acid. But Kyle, well, he would steal cars and break into stores at night. The four of us stuck together because no one else cared or trusted us, with good reason. Not a good parent amongst the four of us. Love and support were shit on the Disney Channel that didn't actually exist. So when someone got released from JDC, we would steal a bunch of beer, get a bunch of pot, and score some acid or shrooms and take them out to the swamp to get insanely fucked up. It was kind of our little welcome home ritual. The swamp was a no man's land. The alligators, boars, bugs, humidity, mud, and crazy redneck meth heads kept all the respectable people away. So as four guys with no future, it was the flame to our moths. I was about 17 at the time, and Tony was getting out after an altercation with some skinheads. In the rural south, there aren't all that uncommon. And while Tony basically got attacked, with his priors and skin tone, they threw the book at him. Me, Jimmy, Jimmy's brother, and Kyle had already kicked the crap out of them while he was locked up. So, there was nothing left to do but go raise hell. So Kyle stole his grandma's old ass Buick Regal. We loaded it up with all the party supplies, and we were off at 85 miles per hour towards the deep swamp, guzzling beers to 9 inch nails. The ride took 45 minutes, enough time to smoke some bowls and drink, you know, 4 or 5 beers each. We were on our way to get obliterated. Well, the closer you get to the swamp, the crappier the roads get. With the mud and all, it gets harder to maintain them. So if you're messed up, you never really get to the same place twice, because after a while it's just twisting spider webs of where you think you can drive. We managed to park at what seemed it might be a place to park, and started walking off when Jimmy stopped us. He smiled really big as he whipped out a bag of shrooms from his pants. We all split the bag into four portions, then, without pausing, ate a fistful of magic mushrooms each. Like I said, if destroying your life was a sport, we were in the pros. Then we returned to walking into the dark and isolated swamp woods, thinking as always that we were invincible. I had a backpack full of beer, and I mean full. We swiped as much of a pallet as we could carry. Jimmy had all the pot on him because he wore those jenkos with the giant pockets. Kyle played the I ain't got two legs, so... I can't carry shit card as always, and Tony, well, Tony had a gun. I know that is going to worry some people, but we rarely had used guns. But deep in the swamp with alligators and boars and a non-zero percent chance of meth crazed rednecks, you want one around just in case. No one is winning a fist fight against an alligator, trust me. Normally how these trips go is we walk on kind of a hike and explore. The drugs kick in and make everything a lot more interesting. We spend the night trying to freak each other out and have fun by breaking, burning, climbing things. Then we spend the morning hung over as hell trying to find the car. It was actually a lot of fun most times and there were no repercussions. The shrooms started kicking in as the sun started setting. 
I remember seeing swirls and stretched out shadows of the trees and on the water. The forest took an orange hue that filled me with warmth as we started settling down with the bad jokes and started climbing over things deeper into the swamp. We weren't so much trying to be quiet, but with some of the dangers around, we weren't trying to be loud either. More talking in hushed tones, and you could tell all of us were just kind of vibing with the sense of adventure at the moment. It was common at the beginning, kind of attuning to nature and feeling the openness, taking it in and letting each other take it in too. I started to get a really bad feeling as it got darker, but I pushed it away, thinking I was just trying to ruin my trip, and the forest was getting spooky on me for a second. When you hallucinate, you have to watch how you feel first, because if you give in to bad feelings, you hallucinate bad things, so generally, if you keep your spirits and reinforce good feelings, you have a good time. I could kind of feel that all of us had just shook off the bad feeling though, and that planted this little seed of doubt in my head. As we got over the bog and started going up, Kyle started complaining about his leg. He did this when he chickened out, but you were never completely sure. All of us doubled back to the car so he could sleep it off in the back seat. A lot of the time, he needed help getting over logs and stuff, so we had to take him. I noticed coming back towards the car felt a lot better than going deeper into the woods. But I mean the familiar versus the unknown. And I didn't want to pussy out like Kyle and ruin the whole thing. Three was still a party. We headed off exactly like we had done before. Once we got a little bit in, though... I noticed one of the logs I had used not five minutes ago had moved. I didn't know why, but this upset me greatly. I stupidly didn't say anything and just tried to swallow it. The pleasant hum that had been in my ears since I started tripping, turning into a high-pitched whine, almost like a siren. We went back over some ponds and into the deeper forest where it got really dark. Without Kyle there, we moved a lot faster. About 30 minutes of climbing over rocks and branches and pushing in between trees and shrubs, a violent shaking of the bush to the side of us made us all stop. It wasn't really close, about 20 to 25 feet away, and that was still too close. And whatever had made it sounded a lot bigger than squirrel or something harmless. In my mind's eye, I was picturing either a boar or a gator, neither of which was a good thing. Years of doing stupid shit together had locked us together. Jimmy, Tony, and I instantly started walking backward ever so slowly and ever so lightly. I guess there are some carryover skills to being delinquents. About 20 more feet of that, and another violent brush shaking happened, followed by what sounded almost like a snarl. You know that sound when two dogs suddenly go nuts at each other? That growl that sounds like it tore the air? I get three silent taps on the shoulder. It's Tony. And that's our silent code to run as fast as fucking possible in about three seconds. I'm not arguing and tap Jimmy in the dark. We had been pulling closer to each other as we pulled back. So at this point, it was shoulder to shoulder. As we turned away and ran, and I mean fast, we were criminals. I got about six steps before something slams into the back of me. I can hear cans falling out of the bag and popping. I smell like beer and I run even harder. Five minutes of pure running full out and the sounds of the chase go silent. Five minutes after that, we stop running as we come close to the crossing where Kyle turned back. Hey, help me cross, Kyle says from the other bank. I guess he decided to man up. 
The shots ring out over the water, and Kyle falls over backwards, holding a bullet wound to the chest. I dive at Tony, pointing. We struggle, and he's fighting me, but I had him from pouncing first. I manage to yank the pistol free, and Tony stares at me, wild-eyed. To, to, Tony says, and I say, to what? Two legs, motherfucker. Kyle had two legs, Tony says. I point the gun at where Kyle fell, and we start making the way over there. After we got to the scene, he was gone. A trail of blood leads through the brush and into the woods on the side of the bank. I start moving to follow the trail. Tony grabs my arm tight. Check the car first. If Kyle isn't there, then we could go after him, Tony says. Now, Tony is completely terrified. I don't really want to believe my best friend just killed my other best friend, and Jimmy looks like he just wants to go home. So, we turn towards the car, and I still have the gun out, and I'm listening hard to make sure Tony doesn't try to get it as much as anything else. We make it to the car okay, and I just hand the gun back to Tony. Kyle is sleeping in the back seat, fake leg off and on the floor of the car. I wish I could tell you we went back to figure out exactly what happened, but we jumped in the car and sped off. All three of us agreed we definitely saw the top half of Kyle, and that was definitely Kyle's voice we heard. One of us may have hallucinated, but all three of us? And the blood was real too. I had some on my pant leg. I was more worried at first that we had killed someone than anything when I remembered the backpack I had on. Speeding down the back road, I pulled the backpack off, and the only thing left in it was two mangled Paps Blue Ribbon cans. When I held up the pack, though, there was four shreds from a claw. Nothing in that swamp has claws like that. Cougars don't go that deep into the bog, and the claws were more hand-sized. This looked more like a bear-sized claw, and whatever chased us was smaller and made sounds kind of like a wolf. I was still hallucinating by the time we all got home, so I can't be 100% sure on anything. Nothing was ever on the news about it. No bodies ever found or cops looking into it. I'm not saying for sure it was a skinwalker, but I don't know anything else that sounds like a wolf, claws like a bear, survives a gunshot, and perfectly imitates Kyle. If it wasn't for the extra leg, we would have walked right over to it with our guard down. <laughs>